Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make your own drop point knife. Now this particular knife project uh, didn't exactly come out the way that it was originally planned. Um, this project is really kind of an experimental proof of concept project. I wanted to uh, make and use a hybrid uh, micarta and wood handle. And I also wanted to try uh, having a very dull uh, glass bead finish on the knife. Um, like I said, it didn't come out exactly the way I wanted, um, but I was very happy with the end result. Um, I'll, I'll explain what went on uh, during the process. Uh, this particular knife started out as a knife blank. I have this particular style in stock. Uh, the blanks were cut by a water jet company uh, here on Long Island, New York. It was called Long Island Water Jet. Uh, they did a great job. The blanks are all uh, cut out of 1095 high carbon steel. Uh, they're 3 16 thick um, and they were designed to be a little bit uh, flexible in their design so individual uh, knife makers can uh, grind down the bevels differently. They can uh, play around with the uh, shape of the knife uh, even with the handle a little bit. Um, you can put guards on or you can leave it without guards. Um, of course you could always do spine work etc. Uh, the process starts just by grinding down both sides of the knife so that the tip comes to a point. Um, you can do this on a, on a belt sander. I'm using a 2x72 and I, I think I actually finished it up on, my, uh, on a 4 inch belt sander. Now the next step in the process is to bring the blade over to uh, the 2x72 um, belt sander. I've attached a bevel plunge jig uh, to the knife and that's just going to make sure that uh, the bevel plunges on both sides of the knife are uniform. This mounts into uh, my angle or my bevel jig and that uh, basically allows me to set the angle of the bevel just with a, uh, a bolt that's threaded through that angle iron. And then that just slides across uh, my table and it creates a nice uniform uh, level bevel on, uh, on one, of course, one side of the blade at a time. And 1095 is a really nice steel uh, to work with. It doesn't take all that long uh, to cut down or to grind down these bevels. Now, for this particular project, because I was going to um, glass bead the finish, I wanted to leave uh, the bevel kind of rough. Uh, what I mean by that is I, I would normally grind the bevel with a you know with a 60 uh, grit paper and then probably finish it off with a 400. For this particular one, I just left it at the 80. Um, I figured after it was glass bead, glass beaded, I wanted to be able to see some of those um, horizontal belt sanding lines on the bevel itself. And just a, a different type of finish. So. Once the bevel is done on one side, I'm just going to unclamp, turn the blade around, and, and then reposition it on that same bevel jig so that I can grind the other side of the knife. And you'll notice that each, each you know, pass or two on the sander, I will dip that entire uh, blade and, and actually the jig itself right into a bucket of, of water to cool it down. So this is now just uh, grinding or sanding the bevel on the opposite side of the blade. A lot of people do this freehand. Uh, I'm not one of them, just not that good. Um, I use the bevel jig and the, and the plunge jig in order to uh, make sure that everything comes out nice and straight. And I'm just looking at the thickness of the blade on the, on the very edge. Um, and I mark that ahead of time, the center line, and now I can watch both sides of that bevel as I'm grinding it. Uh, to bring them both in. The other trick is that you can measure down from one edge of the knife to your bevel line uh, so that you can, you can match up and, and get both of those lines uniform before you take it out of the jig or unclamp it from the jig. Uh, if you were going to polish the bevels, you would want to change the belt on the belt sander uh, to the 400 grit or whatever grit you wanted to use uh, before uh, you unclamped it and changed or, or ground the other bevel on the other side of the knife. Alright, so this was a pretty quick process. Um, bevel on both sides is finished. 
and now I moved on to that hybrid handle. Now I covered the whole uh, hybrid micarta, uh, you know, wood and micarta handle or scales on a separate video, but but real quick, I'm using a, a spalted maple on on half of the uh, knife handles or ha knife scales, and I'm using a combination of black and brown construction paper, and these are all uh, laminated with fiberglass resin and then pressed together in my micarta press um, to form this hybrid material. Uh, with the end result being, you know, wood showing on the top of the, of the scales and then a micarta um, that when you grind through it will have both black and brown lines um, on the bottom of each scale. This is the material when it comes out of the press and then you have to sand off one uh, side or some of that black uh, construction paper in order to see the wood. These are those hybrid micarta handles or scales um, roughly mounted onto the blade. Now this blade has already now been heat treated and tempered. Uh, that of course is covered on a separate video. You just can't fit all of this on one short video. And what my plan was, was to mount these scales to the handle, to the blade, just with some quarter inch bolts and really finish off um, the scales, all of the grinding and all of the forming on the uh, scales before I had the blade um, glass bead, the glass bead finish applied. Uh, this way I could just basically uh, glue and pin the scales onto the blade without damaging, uh, without having to file, without having to sand uh, the blade at all or, or ruin that glass bead finish. That's not exactly the way it turned out. Uh, I basically finished forming these scales, I use a Dremel grinder, I use a belt sander, and, and I actually do a little bit of, of hand sanding on them. They're going to mount to the blade just like any other scales do. Um, I'm going to use on this particular one uh, three quarter inch brass pins, and I'm going to glue it all up with a, uh, with a two part epoxy. So these are the hybrid scales that are basically roughed to shape. They do just have to be polished. This is kind of one of the places that I went wrong. Uh, so the blade is now glass bead finished, um, and I really like that dull matte finish. I had the bright idea that I still wanted to apply my maker's mark. Uh, even though this is a glass bead finish, it's not that that uh, you know clear that polished finish that you normally apply uh, this type of an etched maker's mark to. Um, and I also messed up on the placement. So number one, I placed my maker's mark lower than I would, as if this knife was going to have brass guards. Um, and I realized that as soon as I lifted off the, the stencil. But I also realized that my maker's mark, which is a two-tone maker's mark, I would normally polish this with a 1500 grit sandpaper in order to get all of those details to show. Of course, as soon as I rub this with 1500 grit sandpaper, I'm going to start to ruin that glass bead finish. So I really, I'm kind of screwed. Um, I went ahead with the, prog with the project and, and I figured I'd, I'd figure something out along the way. Um, I basically mounted the scales, as I mentioned before, uh, with a two-part epoxy. I mixed a little bit of black paint in with that epoxy, uh, pinned it together with brass pins, clamped that overnight, um, and when it came out of the clamps, uh, this, this is basically what I had. Um, at this point, I was really just kind of figuring that at, at the very least, I'll, I'll just continue experimenting with the hybrid handle and I'll see how, how that comes out. While I was sanding the handle, I figured, you know what? I'll just sand off the um, maker's mark and I'll polish the blade. And that's what I ended up doing. And it ended up working out really, really nicely. I sanded um, down the brass pins. I finished sanding the scales and I sanded down and then polished the blade. So, so really, nothing is left of the glass bead finish. I then brought it to the buffing wheel, I buffed uh, the blade, and I also buffed those hybrid micarta scales. And I was really happy with the way the scales came out, especially after you uh, you know, spend a few minutes buffing them, it really brings out a nice shine and the, uh, the characteristic of the wood combined with the, um, with the black and the brown micarta uh, really just gives an, a very interesting rustic look 
the blade here is all polished, um, so I figured I'd go back and uh, put my Maker's Mark in the correct position now. So I, I mounted it a little higher on the blade where I normally would with a, uh, with a knife that did not have guards. And I covered um, electric or electro etching, Maker's Mark etching on a separate video if anybody's interested in the details. I'm just using a 12 volt car battery charger as well as some uh, salt water uh, and a uh, stencil which I had made up with my logo on it. Uh, my particular logo is, is I think it's kind of cool because it's a uh, two-tone logo. So now the etching is done and I'm going to use a 1500 grit paper and I'm just going to polish that etching just to bring out all the details, um, kind of knock off all of the rough edges. And this knife is almost done. So although it did not come out the way that I had planned it to come out, I was very happy with the end result. This is a, um, a pretty good looking uh, drop point knife, uh, 1095 high carbon steel, uh, hybrid wood and micarta scales, uh, maker's mark uh, etched into one side of the blade. And Anybody can basically make a very similar knife. Um, I have these blanks available if you're interested, or you could just cut your own. Um, some finished pictures. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Thank you very much.